to chemistry one. So um sana um um hopefully I'm very very hopeful na you started to love Glen Chem in a much much different way na minahal niyo yung mga chem ninyo. Okay? Kasi Glen Chem is you know, Glen Glen Chem is so so fun. It's hard, yes, but you will learn learn a lot of things here. Okay? So liver function test okay so liver function test so last time we did discuss about the anatomy of the liver the biochemical function of the liver now let's go wrong spelling now let's go to the liver function alteration during diseases so which will lead me now to jaundice cirrhosis tumor rice syndrome and the drug and alcohol related disorders okay so let's start so the first one is your jaundice. So jaundice is actually a characteristic of your skin, your sclera, and even your nails during state of hyperbilirubinemia. Um, John, um, it is also called icterus or hyperbilirubinemia. Icterus, we use the word icteric or icterus when we are describing your sample. You don't say when you saw a patient, na yellowish yung discoloration, you don't say na, Sir, ma'am, you're ecteric. That's wrong, okay? The right term to, to describe them is jaundice. So again, it is a yellow discoloration of your skin, sclera, and even your mucous membranes, okay? So jaundice becomes evident when your bilirubin levels exceed 2 milligrams per dl, okay? 2 milligrams per dl and this is how it looks like okay um this is how it looks like so your jaundice can be of three um could, could be of three sources okay it could be prehepatic hepatic or post hepatic and let me just des describe to you each one briefly before i go deeper into the different diseases but sinabi nating prehepatic Ang problema ay nangyari bago pa dumating sa liver. So meaning to say, there is really a problem when it comes to your RBC, either hemolysis or may autoimmune disease. Okay? May autoimmune disease kaya nagsasabugan yung mga RBC, kaya pagdating sa liver, no overwhelm si liver sa lahat ng i-conjugate niya na mga bilirubin. Correct? So, in prehepatic, the problem started not on your liver, but with your RBC. Okay? In the, in the hepatic, in the hepatic jaundice, ito na ngayon yung talagang problema inside your liver, which we will be discussing in a short while. So, the jaundice originated because of your liver, either incapable, your liver is no longer capable of processing and conjugating your um, your bilirubin or rather um, there is a lack of enzyme or transporter within your liver that is necessary for the conjugation of your bilirubin. Uha? Pwede rin naman siyang post-hepatic. Okay? Pag sinabi natin post-hepatic, the problem arise after the, the bilirubin was conjugated, after the bilirubin was produced, now it is time for it to be disposed in the biliary tract, correct? Through your, going to your intestine, barado daw. At dahil barado doon, naipon ngayon sa liver, naipon ngayon sa system, kaya nagkaroon ka din ng, ng jaundice. It's more like the pre-renal, renal, and post-renal diseases that we are talking about in your, um, in your, AUBF, eh, which I will also be talking about in your kidney function test, okay? In your kidney function test. I will not be handling clinical chemistry too next semester, but I assure you the one that who, that who will be handling it is someone that I also look up to. So, abangan ninyo kung sino ang CC2. And aside from that, okay, aside from that, aside from the CC2, um, hindi na kasi madidiscuss doon si kidney function. Okay? Hindi na madidiscuss si kidney function. Na dapat-dapat madidiscuss si kidney function. But 
ayoko na pilitin yung, ay, hindi na natin siya kayang ipagkasya nga hanggang bukas. O okay, hindi ko na siya kaya, kayang ipagkasya hanggang bukas. That's why I'll be uploading a, a video na lang din for the kidney function. And then, um, if you have any questions, I'll entertain any questions ninyo about it. Okay? So, let's go now to the prehepatic jaundice. The prehepatic jaundice are usually because of problems prior to your RBC reaching your liver. So, usually it is due to too much destruction of RBC. So, lahat ng bagay na may kinalaman sa mabilis na pagkasira ng RBC would actually a potential reason or cause for your prehepatic jaundice. Such as what? Such as hemolytic anemia, malaria, hemolytic disease of the newborn, all of those could possibly cause prehepatic jaundice. Okay? And in this case, okay, the, in the bilirubin assay, the one elevated is what? The one elevated is your indirect bilirubin or your B1. Okay? Your B1. Si B1 increase. Bakit sir? Okay, babalik ko lang na mabilis sa ating kwentuhan nung nakaraan. Natatandaan ninyo itong part na to, um, some of your heme will automa will be converted immediately to your unconjugated bilirubin on your plasma. Okay? That's why your albumin will be collecting it. Okay? Your RBC, your rather your albumin will be collecting it. That's what happened in your prehepatic jaundice. Okay? So, in your prehepatic jaundice, okay, in your prehepatic jaundice, so we have here your um, hemolytic anemia, we have your malaria, and hemolytic disease of the newborn. It is dangerous, especially in infants, okay, to have jaundice at a very young age because that would mean that there are a lot or elevated bilirubin levels in their plasma. Why? Makikisulat na lang ako, ha? hindi ko alam kung nakikita niyo ng malinaw. Because, okay, because um, those excess bilirubin will be deposited in the brain. In that condition, we call it kernicterus. Okay? Kernicterus. The deposition of the deposition of um, bilirubin in the brain is kernicterus. Okay? Kernicterus. And maybe some of you will be wondering, Sir, 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 is it a type of a delta bilirubin or a direct bilirubin or indirect bilirubin? To be honest, it can either be an indirect or a delta bilirubin. Okay? An indirect or a delta bilirubin. Nakukuha po ako. So, indirect or delta bilirubin. Makikisulat na lang din ako ha. Hemolytic anemia, malaria, and um, hemolytic anemia, malaria, and hemolytic disease of the newborn. So, anything that has to do with rapid destruction of your RBC, instead of 120 days, wala pang 120 days, nasisira na si RBC, it is possible na mag-cause ng prehepatic jaundice. Okay? Pre-hepatic jaundice. Second, we have your post-hepatic jaundice. Sa post-hepatic jaundice, ang problema natin nasa dulo. Okay? Ang problema natin nasa dulo. Anong meron sa dulo? Barado yung lagusan. Okay? Barado yung lagusan. That is the reason why in post-hepatic jaundice, the usual causes are the obstruction of your biliary tract. Failure of your bile to flow into your intestine. And generally, this is because of um, impaired bilirubin excretion. Sir, ano pong pwedeng problema? Ano pre pwedeng problema? Unang-una, it can be your gallstone. Gallstone or in, in, in medical term, we call it your cholelithiasis. Okay? Cholelithiasis. Okay? Cholelithiasis. Question, what is the other term for ano? What is the other term for renal stones? Sige nga. Renal stones. What is the other term for renal stone? I am posting it right now on your chat box. The spelling for your cholelithiasis. Okay. Sir, wag na pong cholelithiasis. Ano? 
Okay, some answered renal calculi. Okay, renal calculi. It is also known as your nephrolithiasis. Okay, pag renal. Renal stones, renal calculi, re nephrolithiasis. Okay? And pag sa gallstones naman, that is your cholelithiasis. Okay? So, moving on. Okay, moving on. Um, with regards to your cholelithiasis, um, it can also be due to your pancreatic tumor. Okay? Pancreatic tumor. So, pancreatic tumor can also be a cause for your post-hepatic jaundice. And in this case, the one that is elevated is your... Oops. The one elevated is your direct bilirubin. Si B2. Nakukuha mga kapatid. Sir, bakit hindi mo sinasama si total bilirubin? Obviously, elevated na din si total bilirubin in cases of jaundice. Okay? In cases of prehepatic, which is increased... B1. Okay? In cases of post-hepatic, which is increased, your B2. Sir, are you gonna say it as B1 and B2? No. I'm not gonna say it that way in the exam. So you really have to study the table that I have given you, the, dif the differentiation between B1 and B2, because I can call it direct, then the next day I can call it um, slow-reacting. I can call it water-soluble nakukuha tayo. So, I want you, I would challenge you really kasi kailangan ma-master niyo yung part na yun. Okay? So, moving on, we also have your um, combined, okay, hepatocellular combined jaundice. So, this is caused by hepatocell um, hepatocyte injury caused by viruses, alcohol, and parasites. So, di ba, meron kayong mga fasciolopsis buski, mga ganyan-ganyan natin. So, all of those could also um, contribute to jaundice. So this one, um, both B1 and B2 are elevated. Okay? Both B1 and B2 are elevated. Okay? B1 and B2 are elevated. So now let's go to your, I know, let's, uh, we're starting to enter the, um, we're starting to enter the hepatic stage, the hepatic jaundice na. These are the different conditions that would cause hepatic jaundice. Okay? Hepatic jaundice. Tandaan sa utak ha, na ang prehepatic B1 si mataas. Post-hepatic B2 ang mataas. But pagdating sa hepatic jaundice, pagdating sa derangement in the bilirubin metabolism, it can be both or it can be either. Okay? Either. So, unang-una sa listahan mga kapatid ay si Gilbert. Gilbert syndrome. What is the problem with Gil? Uh, what is the problem with Gilbert? What is the problem with Gilbert syndrome? Is bilirubin transport deficit. When I say bilirubin transport deficit, you have a genetic mutation in the gene UGT1A1 located in chromosome two that produces your UDPGT. What is UDPGT? Kahit nakamute ka, sabayan mo akong bigkasin. What is UDPGT? That is your uridyl diphosphate glucoronyl transferase. O, di ba? So, pag narinig niya lang magulang mo at minim, at minim, ano, sabi niya, ay, ang galing-galing ng anak ko. O, di ba? So, uridyl diphosphate glucoronyl transferase. Okay? So, it produces UDPGT. So, ang problema natin sa Gilberts, wala nang nagtatransport. Okay? At dahil walang nagtatransport, impaired yung cellular uptake natin ng bilirubin. Meaning to say, your bilirubin being carried by your albumin, ako ito si albumin, ito si albumin, yung dala-dala niyang mga B1, hindi niya maipasok sa hepatocytes para makonjugate. Nangkukuha po ako. So kung meron kang, kung ilalabas mo ngayon ulit yung ating pathway, saan nagka-problem si Gilbert? dito sa bandang ito. Wala ka ng uridyl diphosphate glucoronyl transferase dahil nga may mutation. Hindi na nakoconjugate yung B2, yung B1, ito becoming B2 kasi nga hindi na makapasok sa hepatocytes. Nakukuha? So that is a transport deficit. <laughs> transport deficit. Again, that is your Gilbert syndrome. Sino pa kasama ni Gilbert? 
Okay? I, and by the way, dahil dyan, B1 yung increase. Nagigets nyo naman, no? Later, I'll try to um, show you a tabular form para maintindihan ninyo siya. Okay. We also have your Krigler na jar. Krigler na jar is conjugation deficit. Okay? Conjugation deficit. Pagdating kay Gilbert, transport deficit. Hindi makapasok. Dito naman ay nakapasok. Pero, ang problem natin dito, hindi na nakoconjugate yung B1. I hope na, na by just saying the definition of the disease, alam nyo na agad kung alo, anong type ng bilirubin yung increase. So this Krigler na jar is actually a syndrome of chronic, non-hemolytic, unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia. Okay? Infants can be treated by phototherapy. I guess I was able to explain that last time um, since that was a question of Pamela. Na how does phototherapy help people na may mga bilirubin problems? Because dahil nga hindi makonjugate sa loob ng ng kanilang liver, phototherapy would help. Okay? Phototherapy would help. Which leads me to my question. What type of bilirubin is elevated in Krigler's na jar? What type of bilirubin is in, um, increased in Krigler's na jar? B1, B2? Bananas in pajamas. Okay, correct. It's your B1. Okay? These are your B1. Okay, so moving forward, um, we have your Krigler na jar. So kung mapapansin ninyo, Krigler na jar, I want you to write this down ha, nasa kay Bishop din to. Krigler na jar is the most common and the most severe. Okay? And Krigler na jar has two types. Type 1 and type 2. Amazing, di ba? So we have type 1 and type 2. So as you can see here, um, Krigler na jar is a deficiency in your 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 um, UDPGT or your glucuronyl transferase, which is a total or absolute deficiency. So meaning to say, ito yung mas malala. Type 1 is more severe than type 2. Okay? So colorless yung bile, positive yung cur positive kernicterus. Again, what is kernicterus? Um, deposition of bilirubin in your brain. Okay? in your brain. Sabi nga ni Architect Lian, Austria. So, sa ating mga big brains. So, type 1, Krigler na jar, and type 2, Krigler na jar. Okay? Gilbert, transport deficit, Krigler na jar, conjugation deficit. Both are, both are having increased B1. Okay? Si Krigler na jar, um, type 2, pwede pang normal yung kanyang, um, pwedeng normal yung kanyang B2. Nakukuha po ako. Pwedeng normal yung B2 pag sa type 2. Pero sa type 1, low talaga ang B2. Kasi walang magkukonjugate. Not unless magpa-phototherapy ang ating mga pasyente. Nakukuha. So that is Krigler na jar, type 1 and type 2. Okay? Type 1 and type 2. Now let's move on to the other two. Okay, the other two, which are your Dubin-Johnson syndrome and your Rotor syndrome. Sir, ba't nung sila pinagsama? Magkamukha ba sila? Magkamukha. Tama. Your Dubin-Johnson syndrome, your DJ, I call DJ na lang nga minsan, your DJ syndrome and your Rotor are characterized by the blockage of um blockage of bilirubin excretion into the canaliculi. This is not post-hepatic yet because the problem here is actually, kung kanina hindi makapasok si bilirubin sa hepatocyte, ngayon naman hindi makalabas si bilirubin sa hepatocyte. Bakit? Because they lack your multidrug resistant, multispecific organic and ionic transporter protein or your MDR2 slash CMOAT. That is your, that is the entire definition of that. Um, Multidrug resistant, multispecific, organic, anionic transporter protein. Sir, kailangan ko pa i-memorize. Sige, basta yung MDR2, basta alam mo kung ano ibig kong sabihin sa DJ, John, sa DJ at saka sa rotor. 
Okay? So, what's the problem here? The problem is this. Okay? Um, increase ang ating B1 or B2. Which one is increased? B1 or B2? Sa DJ and rotor. B1, B2. Ang O3 at O4, wala nang sumasagot. B1 or B2? Okay? The, the one increase is your B2. Okay? The one increase is your B2. So, in your DJ and rotor, elevated si B2, and of course, si total bilero B. Although for the rest, actually, increase talaga si bilero B, lalo na pag may jaundice na. Diba? So, this is your lever, the tura of your lever. So, the, what do you call this? The classification on how I, I would, we would be able to classify DJ and your rotor syndrome is by the appearance of an intense dark pigmentation in the liver due to the accumulation, sorry, due to the accumulation of your bilirubin. Okay? Due to the, the deposition of your, your bilirubin. And you can actually see that in your rotor syndrome. Okay? So, makikilagay ako dyan, ha? Sineparate ko na kung sino si DJ kay rotor. Si DJ, may problema sa MDR2 CMOT, pero walang dark pigmentation sa liver. Sinong meron? Si rotor. Okay? Si rotor. Okay? So, moving forward, tama ba yung sinabi ko? Okay. So, baliktad. <laughs> baliktad. Si DJ ang may black pigmentation, si rotor ang wala. Okay? Si DJ meron, si DJ ay maitim, si rotor ay wala. Okay? DJ Johnson yung meron. Okay? So, please, correct, please um, paano na lang, pa-edit sa notes. Okay? Last is your lucid result um, syndrome. So, it is a familial form of unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia. Obviously, what type of bilirubin is elevated? B1. Okay? So, um, this is um, this is most common. Okay? This is most common um, in your babies. Okay? In your infants that are having breast milk with their moms that has maternal steroids. Okay? So, nagpass ng maternal steroid. So, to differentiate it one from the other, so, we have ito. So, in the prehepatic, guys, nakikita yung screen. So, I want you to master this, okay? So, in the prehepatic, total bilirubin yung increase at unconjugated. Okay, B1. Sa hepatic, sa Gilbert's, lahat mataas. Sabi ko sa inyo, di ba? Pero sa Gilbert's, Walang conjugated kasi B1. Ang napansin niyo yung arrangement dito no, total bilirubin B2 B1 yan. So normal increase, decrease sa Krigler na jar kasi walang nagko-conjugate. Ayun. So Dubin Johnson. Okay? Sir, hala pareha si Dubin Johnson sa kasi rotor, hanapin yung maitim kay DJ yon. Okay? So ito, John this in the newborn. Okay, John this in the newborn. Halos kamukha ni Gilberts. Okay, halos kamukha ni Gilberts. At kamukha din ni prehepatic. So, you need to read the definition kung ano yung problem. Okay? Post-hepatic, sir, lahat mataas. Yes, lahat mataas. An example of that is in your cirrhosis. Cirrhosis is a clinical condition with, in which your scar tissue replaces your normal healthy tissue. Question, how many percent should be um, abolish in your um, in your liver bago siya mag-fail. Okay? How many percent? Ay! Se how many percent? Ang sagot dito, 80, 80, 80. May sumagot ng 70. Parang yun, 70 yung kailangan ninyo para pumasa. Okay? 70 yung kailangan nyo para hindi kayo ma-abolish. Okay? Para hindi kayo ma-abolish. So, 80%, okay, 80% yung ating kaila. 80% dapat yung abolish. Okay? So, saan si 16%? Ano yung 16% na, na dapat yung tandaang 16%? 16%, saan siya? Ano siya? Okay, nitrogen content. Very good, nitrogen content. 
Okay. Saan naman si ano? Joke lang. Tama na. Okay. So, moving forward. Okay. So, um, your cirrhosis is most common in male. <laughs> most common in your male. So, other, um, this is the most, com uh, most common cause of your cirrhosis is PAC. Diba? Alcoholism. Hepatitis. And your Wilson's disease. Question, what? Um, what is what plasma protein is the problem in your Wilson's disease? Sige nga. What is the problem in your Wilson's disease? What is the problem with your Wilson's disease? Ay, ay hindi po yan tama. What plasma protein ng tanong? Tama po. Ang tamang sagot ay your... Okay, 0304. Ano? Ang tamang sagot ay your ceruloplasmin. Correct. Ceruloplasmin in cases of Wilson's disease. Increase, decrease. What is the matter? Increase, decrease. Okay. What is, anong, anong level? Okay. Decrease. Very good. So in Wilson's disease, ceruloplasmin is decreased. That's why your copper are deposited in your brain, in your liver, causing your jaundice, eventually your cirrhosis, and also in your eyes. And we call it what? The, the, the deposition of your copper in your eyes are called what? What do we call that? Ay, mabibilis ang ating mga keyboard warrior. We call that your 0304. Baka delayed yung tanong ko sa 0304. Okay. Kaser Fleischer Ring. Okay. Kaser Fleischer Ring. So, that is for your, um that is in your eyes. Okay. That is in your eye. So, having said that now, ayan, your Kaser Fleischer ring is observed in your Wilson's disease. And eventually, the deposition of your liver, uh, the deposition of your copper inside your liver could also cause your cirrhosis. So, sa cirrhosis kasi, your liver can actually regenerate. Kaya niyang gumawa pa ng bagong cells na hepatocytes. It's just that when your, um, your RBs, your... Ano ba yun? RBC na iwan sa hima yung utak ko. <laughs> in cases of copper deposition, ayan, in cases of in cases of cirrhosis rather, yung scar tissues natin, hindi na yan nagre-regenerate. Okay? Ganyan na siya. Okay? So, treatment, ano daw treatment sa cirrhosis? Number one, actually hindi treatment but prevention are abstinence from alcohol. Okay? So, tap your back. Okay? Tap your back. So next are interferons for viral hepatitis. And also have corticosteroids if you have autoimmune hepatitis. Okay? Autoimmune hepatitis. So moving forward. We go now to your tumor. So when it comes to your tumor, we have um, uh, usually the, these are tumors with poor prognosis. So we have the first classification, which are the primary or the metastatic uh, uh, tumor. So around 90 to 95% of all hepatic malignancies are classified as metastas metastatic. So meaning to say it can, um, it can move around or it can, be, um, it can be transferred to other parts of the body. So the second classification is whether it is benign or malignant. So, ayan. So, your hepatocellular adenoma, your hemangioma, those are benign. But your hepatocellular carcinoma, your hepatoma, and your bile duct carcinoma, those are malignant. Okay? Those are malignant. So, when we say primary, um, uh, when we say primary kasi, um, sa liver talaga nag-umpisa ang problema. Okay? Pag metastatic, nalipat lang sa liver yung problema and you would wonder sir bakit um if you still remember in your histopath di ba merong different ways on how your your ano how your tumor will be um will be transferred kunwari it can be direct contact kunwari tinatanggal yung breast na ipatong doon sa intestine mo na, nalipat nalipat yung ibang cells so magkakaroon ng tumor ulit sa intestine naman Okay, dahil lang si pinatong. Direct contact, legit yun, totoo yun. It can also be due to lymphatic or lymphatic na lymphatic uh, metastasis or it can also be because, eto yun no, may mga tumor cells that are freely circulating on your, cell, on your blood. 
And remember, di ba? Remember na in your liver, you are receiving 1.5 liter of blood every single day. And you have your portal, your portal vein and your hepatic artery that receives 70% and 25% of blood each day. So there's a possibility talaga na those tumor cells will be deposited, will come across your liver, causing now the metastatic um, cancers. Okay? The metastatic tumors in your liver. So, ayun. So, moving forward, so after your tumor, we go now to your RACE, RICE syndrome. Some call it RACE syndrome, RICE syndrome. Whichever you want to call it, then yeah, go. So, eto ayan, ginagawan ko ng palatandaan para nyo matatagdaan. Si Ray Syndrome, mahilig sa mga R. Bakit? So, originally, your Ray Syndrome is actually a group of disorder, either by infection, metabolic uh, metabolic problem, um, toxic drugs, um, toxic drug-induced that are almost exclusively found in your children. Okay? So, Ano yung drugs? Aspirin. R. Reyes aspirin. Anong mga infections? Varicella. R. Varicella. Yo, and what other condition, metabolic conditions? Gastroenteritis. Okay? And influenza. Sir, nasira yung ano mo. Nasira yung palatandaan mo. Walang R sa influenza. Pag may influenza ka, di ba? Pag may flu, giniginaw ka. So, Basahin niyo yan yung giniginaw siya. So, may R pa din sa influenza. So, Ray syndrome, maipilit lang. Varicella, gastroenteritis, influenza, giniginaw, brr, okay? And your aspirin, okay? So, these are the usual causes of your Ray syndrome, okay? So, um, last but not the least, okay? So, we all, ayan, so, ayan pala. So, encephalopathy, fatty liver, degeneration of liver, and transaminase, um, elevation are just secondary of secondary um, secondary effects ng race syndrome okay ng race syndrome so alcoholic alcohol and drug related disorder so according to Ms. Catriona Gray di ba I am for it being uh, so are you in favor with the use of marijuana legalization of marijuana okay so I am for it being for medical use, but not so for a recreational use. Ayan. So, paborito yan ni Sir Nathan. Okay? So, this is the most common cause of immune-mediated injury to your hepatocytes. Okay? Immune-related, um, immune-mediated injury in your hepatocytes. So, where can you see it? You can see it, uh, ano yung mga drugs that can cause it? Your acetaminophen, your ethanol, which is the most common drug okay alcohol is considered to be um actually they consider it drug as well so most common drug alcohol um ayan, so alcohol dehydrogenase and acetyl acetaldehyde dehydrogenase so the acetaminophen in your ethanol would induce an immune response and that immune response would be directed against your you uh, will be directed against your um, acetaminophen. It will be directed up um to your liver. Okay. So, moving on. Okay, moving on. So, acetaminophen. Saan yung nakikita si acetaminophen? Anyone? Saan nakikita si acetaminophen? Sa paracetamol. Okay, sa paracetamol. Kaya ang sabi ni John Lloyd, ingat. Okay, hindi niya sinabing mag-ingat ka sa pupuntahan mo. Mag-ingat sa pag-inom ng paracetamol because it can actually cause um it can actually cause intoxication and eventually liver disease. Okay? It can cause liver disease. So, ingat, okay? So, kapag wala namang lagnat, huwag uminom ng acetaminophen <laughs> kasi bawal. Okay? So, alcohol induced injury, so you Choose your poison, ano ka ba, Black Label, Smirnoff, Hennessy, Bacardi, or Jack Daniels, okay? So, pili na po, mga suki. So, alcoholic fatty liver, alcoholic hepatitis, and alcoholic cirrhosis. So, all of this are very, um, all of this are um, due to alcohol-induced, okay? So, 
you have a risk of having alcohol in this liver injury if you would take 30 grams per day. So that is 3 to 4 drinks per day. Okay? 3 to 4 drinks per day. So imagine that, di ba? Kung 3 to 4 drinks ka per day. Okay? So, talagang ano na, um, talagang tawag dito, um, yung, yung hindi mo na inom ng ilang ara, ng ilang buwan, ininom mo ng isang ano. Well, di ba? Um, that would cause a liver-induced injury eventually. So, when it comes to ano, when it comes to high risk, ayan, so 120 grams per deciliter, so 12 to 16 drinks per day. <laughs> so, ang iniinom nila, okay, 12 to 16 drinks per day. So, sabi nga natin, um, ang highest talaga na risk would be seen if it is greater than 120 days, okay, 120 days. So when you reach your toxicology next sem, meron kayo doon pag-aaralan na yung alcohol intoxication. Nakakatawa yun kasi um, based on the characteristic ng lakad ng ano, paglakad ng paglakad ng ano, paglakad ng isang individual, malalaman mo na kung gano'n siya ka-intoxicated. Okay? So malalaman mo yung levels ng intoxication ng ano. I don't remember it pa kasi I did not review that. Pero meron gano'n. Okay? So... Ayan, tinatawag na po nila si Marv. Sino si Marv? What Marv? Joshua Marvin ka ba? Ah, Marv ba? Okay. Okay. So, moving forward, okay? So, moving forward, gin bulag daw sila, mga kapatid. Okay? So, alcoholic fatty liver. So, alcoholic fatty liver has a slight elevation, makikisulat ako, has a slight elevation of your AST, ALT, and your gamma glutamyl transferase or your GGT. And a fat uh, biopsy would show fatty infiltrates in your liver. Okay? Fatty infiltrates in your liver. So, I guess I will not be able to discuss na entirely the different tests for um, liver function. But I would, syempre, re-record ko na lang para ma-aral ninyo. Okay? So, alcoholic fatty liver. So, instead na mag-makeup class pa tayo, mag-record na lang ako. Ha? So, alcoholic um, hepatitis. Ayan. So, moderate. Makikita yung increase na mga yan. So, we have the deritis ratio. So the deritis ratio is um, AST ALT ratio greater than two. Okay, if it is greater than two, alcoholic hepatitis siya. Okay, but if it is less than two, pag less than two yung ano yung deritis ratio, viral hepatitis siya. Okay, makikisulat ako nun. Pag greater than two, deritis ratio, alcoholic. Pag less than two the latest ratio that is viral hepatitis. Okay? Viral hepatitis. So, in the scoring system, ayan, meron tayong scoring system ng hepatic, um, hepatic al alcoholic hepatitis. Uh, we have your moderate discriminant function, your Glasgow score, your model of for end-stage liver disease, or your MELD score. Okay? So, ayan, eventually, meron din ikaw um, alcoholic cirrhosis. So similar to what we were discussing kanina, um, cirrhosis as the appearance of uh, replacement of your scar tissue induced by alcoholism. Okay? Induced by your alcoholism. So the time is 11.26 right now. The time is 11.26. So I'll be cutting this recording para lang meron tayong partition that this video, uh, what we discussed are all about the different diseases related to liver, okay? 